Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, look what we got here. This is an older 500E. But this is what I wanted to show you. This is a... This is just worth the video right here, isn't it? What? Look at this. I'm just disconnecting the stop cable. There we go. Sometimes something's easy and sometimes it's not. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, somebody had access to tie wraps. We know that. Broke something. Okay, let me just get this off the engine now. Oh yeah, I should, hey, I got BSS's small engine thingamajig remover. Let's try that. Are you guys getting any of these? Not really, eh? Ha! Perfect. Okay, this is the uh, repair for the stop cable on a... Who makes it? Weed eater! And I just have to show you what we replaced, right? So this was the one end that clips onto the handlebar. This is the other end where you tied a knot in the wire and put some adjustable tie wraps in there. And then there's the other knot going the other way down to the Z bend at the uh, engine, but that broke too. So that's that's pretty inventive. I just might keep this around for a while. It's worth uh, it's worth discussing. Maybe maybe a happy hour tomorrow night. So we'll keep that till the end of the video. And I think I got the answer here. So let's just see if this has any any possibility at all. distance of the uh, shutoff bar. We got any fuel in this bad boy? Yeah, we got fuel. Wait, don't run. These kind of options are lots of fun. Traveling an inch. Yeah, it's gonna work. We have one more here. This one. We'll see if it's a little tiny bit longer. Just a little bit longer. No, it's actually short. So now, what else do we have? I guess that's it. That's gonna have to be our victim right there. Okay, well that's step one, right? It runs. 
All right, you guys. This new cable works, but it is a bit too tight. It's just, it's eventually going to snap. So I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to try one thing first. Thank you, Brandon, for this. There we go. I tell you, BSS small engines, guys. He's a smart guy. He, he made these. A computer pooped it out. Digital printing. So I need, on this uh, thing, I need about another, oh, what would that be? Centimeter or nine sixteenths of an inch? More cable here. It's just pulling a little bit too tight, which offsets this. Pardon me. And I don't know if I can do it. I'm going to play with this one and or use this one as my measuring device and go through absolutely every cable I've got. Okay, here we go. I've got a new sleeve here, conduit. I've got a wire in there connected to the machine already for the on-off down here. So all I need is a Z-bend to connect this to the hole. And uh, I'm not that good at this. Mick from Mick's Small Engine is a, is a the Meister. I kind of forget where I put them. I haven't used them since last year. Ah! in one of these four little boxes. If you're like me, when I was a kid I loved these little boxes. And these, these guys came, not the box, or not the, the units, but these guys came from my uh, second cousins, but they were like ants to me. And uh, they gave me all these cute little boxes that I put my special little hoodickers in, right? So this hoodicker is going to go on that wire. And we can set it, crimp it, stick an end on it. Or we could use a crimp like that. But those are not adjustable when you're all done, right? So I'm going to use this. And it goes in like that. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe there's more than one type. There we go. And that is going to go right through there. We'll undo the bolt. Are you getting this? I think you are. Hey, 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 Ralphie, boy! And we're going to stick that on there like that. And take it, put, I'm gonna, I'll start it with the, near the end. Yeah, nothing to lose. Oh, I think it's an eight millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Seven millimeter. It's ringing a bell. Yes, it is. Now, we need a little nut driver. And I'm gonna take it, before the other one was tight there, right? So I'm gonna just take this right to the end. Uh, right there, you'll see how the wire sticks through. Like it goes up and through. Okay, yeah, there you go. And I can adjust this two or three times. It's the, it's the one I prefer, but they cost a bit more. That's too tight. This is how, these are very, very accurate things, eh? Very, very good. Well, I think we're there. It feels good. Will it fire? Well, we have to prime it, I guess. I love it. 
So that is one way to fix a Z bin. The other way is to splice the cable with these little splicers. Do I have any open? No. But I think you get the idea. You put the two wires together and then you use a, a swage connector to squish them together. But I'm not that good at adjusting them. And this one is not putting any stress on this, on this, can you see it? Yeah, on this particular connector right there. So now, we'll put this away. Eh, that's about three dollars for me to do that. It's a high-end repair for me. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, if you're gonna be doing any power washing at all, get quick connects. Not so hard for that end, but for the pressure washer end, it is the one from the hose is like that one. You just push it on. Listen to that baby fill. Isn't that beautiful? And then before you start it, before you start it, run water through the hose and get a good flow. That'll do. You can put that back in its happy little place. And we'll bring the chair a little closer. I know I'm moving around. You're going to throw up, right? Oh, and... This is really weird, I know. Have you guys ever had a sense of belonging? Like, every once in a while, especially when I'm here at the door of the garage or something, I really feel like I belong here. It's not just the small engines or whatever, but, you know, uh, Mrs. P and I have worked really hard to get all this, and uh, nobody can take it away. You know, we are, we're doing well. And uh, when I get a sense of belonging, it's very special. Thank you. Okay, here we go. On. Close, eh? This one was exceptionally scungy, so I took it upon myself to clean it. I hope you saw some of that. Thanks, guys. Alright, I'm back. I'm going to try and change the oil in this guy. Sometimes I use my oil extractor because these are hard to get to. I'm just going to try using my uh, little two liter bowl here. All the while, I'm not to burn myself or hurt my knees. On the carburetor side. No, it's on the on the muffler side. Oh. Now we should probably have a look at the blade. 
made while we got this thing without oil in it and tilt it to the muffler side, right? Got a storm blowing in. Got a storm blowing in, we hope. I'm just going to touch it up. I got to. Looks like a 9 16. Possibly a 14. <laughs> yes, I just washed the floor. I thought we're Mrs. P. Perks, your car. And yes, I know the lighting is bad. Reverse. Oh. I need to have the air plugged in to make it go. How bad is it? It's actually not that bad, eh? It's got the big long cut on it. I'm just going to touch it up in here because I don't feel like taking my grinder to the outside world. All right, I haven't tuned up a million of these. I think it still takes 500 silly meters of oil, but we'll see. Engine made in the USA. Well, thank you. Anything better was if it was made in Canada. I'm just going to let that drip and we'll come back in just a hair. Okay. Let's just see what's happening here. It was kind of a homemade set of threads on the end of this funnel. Okay, knees, how then? All right, oh, that would have been exciting starting that up with that under there. Ugh. Ugh, forgive me, I'm kind of hot. The kind you used to use on the closet one. It's right on the, right on, baby. Half a liter. No, that's not screwing it, no. That's what I hate about these. Oh, I hate everything. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Wow. They do put a screwdriver attachment on there. All right. Oh. Huh. So now it's just a spark plug in the air cleaner, right? Eh? What size is that? Is that the little five eighths guy? Yep, a roof. And on this one, I use the 5 8 that I've ground down a little bit. You know what? We should be on the we should be on the lift now, right? I don't have to, I got the oil plug in, so I don't have to roll around on the ground like that. After all, this one runs. I just have to finish the tuna. You guys want them? Yeah, you're watching this pretty good. Well, if the plug looks good, I'm just going to clean it. It'll be dirty. I don't think this engine's been serviced in its life. You know, it's just a nice overhead valve kind of a usage. Oop. Not bad. I'm very impressed. I'm just going to throw a mask on and run this across the buffer. I'll be right back. I'm just going to clean that plug. All right. I just checked the spark plug gap for this spark plug. This is the narrowest one of the bunch. It is for the, uh, it's 20 thousandths. 
So I'm just going to go find that here. 21, 22, 20. Let's see where we are. Oh, baby, eh? And I've cleaned it. And that's okay. And it still has the paint from when they painted the motor. So this is the original spark plug. And that's okay. Perfect. Good. And now it's got oil. Okay, we'll start from the bottom. Sharp blade. Clean plug. Oil change. And now I'm just going to check the air filter and I expect it to be bad. Got to be careful with these on, uh, come and see here, my friend. Okay, right there. You got to be careful lifting this up because you can snap it off. And that's a $12.95. Yeah. Oh my goodness. going to change things a little bit, eh? Let's just improve the lighting on this whole operation when we put it back together and wipe it out. <laughs> okay, dokie, man. I'll be right back. It's going to take a few minutes. Okay, that's uh, pretty much the last of the physical tune-up. Now I'm just going to get some Fantastic and a few rags. Because the customer is a very nice person, and we'll just, not a lot, we'll just provide a little bit of love. I'm still getting some sludge off there, but it, you know, you saw how dirty that air filter was, right? Tell you though, when you're washing down a mower like this, you got to be careful. There's little spring ends and stuff sticking out, just waiting to cut you. Hey, Paulie, cut me. They're gonna wonder where their mower is. So there is some satisfaction to this, you guys. I don't like the saying that's good enough, because good enough in the big picture is never enough. So we got oil, sharp blade, oh I didn't oil the wheels, I'll get that after. Uh, probably just about out of gas, but it seems to really, oh yeah it is just about out of gas, we'll give it a little drink. Just an arfa tank. Is that good gas? It's good gas. Nothing but good gas around here. That's about what it came in at. Oh, there we go, a good sploosh, eh? Okay, I'm just going to start it up. And then when I uh, oil the wheels, I can burn my hands on the muffler. Are you ready? So, new, oh yeah, kind of rebuilt, I could say a rebuilt uh, stop cable too.
and I ran that mower for 10 minutes. Now this lady has a townhome and her yard doesn't take 10 minutes to cut. So I think we're there, guys. I, it is also a very worn engine. When I got it, it was covered in oil. So thank you.